Hey guys, happy Sunday. It's going to be a video of me doing the work. I cleaned the glass off after I did the video yesterday. And you can get a good idea of these fish here. You can see things a lot clearer. Colors are looking pretty good on everybody. But um, I'm going to do a quick, well, it's not going to be a quick. But I'm just going to do a video of me doing the work. So this is what I usually do once a week. And I'm going to, I've got a hose that I tap into the FX5 and use the FX5 to pump water out of here. These guys are, it's interesting. Lucky's showing some swagger. Lucky's looking pretty amazing. See the color. Pretty fish. All right, so here we go. Start the work. First off, I go into the garage and I get the hoses. This is where I keep all my big hoses. Out here, a big Tupperware container. Take all these and carry them in. So this is my Aquion exchanger. This is my Aquion here. And then this black hose is uh, what I use to tie into the FX5 and pump it out. And I'm going to grab those channel locks and then walk it all back. These hoses, take this channel lock, this Aquion. And you actually can see where I grab it with the channel locks. That doesn't hurt the threads because those threads aren't used for the faucet. So now I go this way. Head to the half bath, go in here, turn this light on, and screw this like so. And then let's see if I can do this with one hand. This is kind of tricky. Just kind of just kind of know the angle that that's on and fill it and get it, get the thread started and then away you go. And then I have, if you don't have that washer right there, this will leak. So that's kind of important. And the channel locks I've got down below because I found that after pumping water in and doing all this, it gets hard. So then what I do is I run this right here how to do this with one hand. I just want to show you guys. Usually it's a little easier. But grab this. Take this here. Whoop. Get the camera on it. And then just start. And for those of you that have never seen this, the Aquion, if the if the blue valve right there is is horizontal, it means water's going to stop and it's going to go this way. It's going to go into the tank. If I have it this way, I'm pulling water out. So I actually run this hose. I'm going to have another hose. And matter of fact, you guys need some light. So I got a light right here. Let's see if this works. So what I'm going to do is I turn those off. Let's see if I can do this for you really quick. This is kind of tricky one-handed. So the first thing I do is I turn off the intake, close it like so, then close this. And then usually at the same time I'm pulling the power right here. This power, that's an extension cord. It also has my heater back there. My heater is on the same circuit as my pump. And that's just a good safety measure. I would advise anybody who sets up one of these when you're doing maintenance, that you make sure your heater is on the same circuit as your pump. Because the challenge is if you 
Um, when you're doing these, there's a lot of people that have done this before where if they have a heater and, it, and they're siphoning out and they get the water below the heater, it gets really hot and then it actually explodes as you're putting water back in because it, well, anyway. So then this, you just press in and then pull this out. And I'm gonna have to set this down for a second because I can't do this with one hand. Okay, so this is on there. This is that extra hose that I had that I pulled out of the garage. Notice how that's horizontal, so there's no water siphoning out of the tank. And then I run this to the toilet. So let me do that for you really quick. All right, so I just take this hose and away we go. I actually need to get a new hose because it's starting to get kinks in it. It's about four years old. And I need to find a better way to do this. But anyway, so here's this. There we go. That's in there. And I just put the lid on it so that somebody trips on it. See these kinks? This is just an old hose. When those weren't there, it pumped out a lot quicker, as you can imagine. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whoop, you can't see anything. So what I'm going to do, let's see if I can give you some light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that right there, this one. So you're going to hear it. Listen. Look at that all right so it's automatically siphoning so I'm getting a free siphon right now into the bathroom and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this back in and uh, I just have to make sure I don't get so now it's pumping out it's 900 gallon per hour FX5 and then notice my heater is right back here and it's running horizontal and it's really, really low. And I actually purposely put it below the, uh, where the, the siphon tube is, the intake on the FX5. Put it below where the grill plate is because it water, it'll lose suction there and then it'll stop siphoning out. So, all right. So now, uh, I gotta get the Aquion right here, uh, into the 120, get the water flowing and start siphoning out debris. So, starting on that now. I just ran this hose, I unwound it down here and ran it into the 120, and then I just run in here, and what I do is I open this up, and you can hear how that's, this is getting pumped in. And that's perfect, by the way. That's, pullets are great for that, if you have a fish tank. All right, so, I'm pulling water out, and then I'm going to actually use this to clean a bunch of stuff, and I actually, I'm just trying to get debris, that's really it, and then it also helps pull it out of here quicker, but, um, alright, so, what I usually do, like right in here, this stuff, if you notice, I put this down in there, see the debris coming out? See all that? That's all I do. Debris tends to get trapped in there. These plants really get their nutrients from the root system. And I just try to get this stuff out of the plant because it... Not doing a good job. But th I, do, I do this. And then places where... Uh, where there's no plants, so like right in here. And I and I don't I don't go deep. This is a, this is as far as I go. I do about like that. Just get stuff off the top if I can. Otherwise, I end up pulling a lot of black sand, which I don't want to do. 
The other thing I do is this is a great time to clean the glass. It's also a good time to do pruning on the plants. And it's a good time for me to put root tabs in. If there's a plant that I feel like struggling, so like that glossostigma, I might give it a root tab. It looks a little weak. It looks like it needs, uh, needs some food. So anyway, uh, let me get busy. You can see I've already got a lot of water out of here now. And uh, hopefully I will remember to turn this back on when I start the other half of this process. All right, I want to show you how I clean the hair grass. Because this is kind of weird. It's almost like vacuuming carpet. So I just kind of just get in there and then just kind of sweep it. Like so. And then see that pearl weed that's crawling in there? I'll end up pulling that out when I get the water low. I'm also going to be pulling out this bacopa that's front runners. Um, and this is really when you make choices about how you want your plants to grow out. I spooked him. I hit that tube against the um, driftwood and it makes a vibration and they are very sensitive to vibration especially one like that really spooks them all right i can't do this with one hand sorry guys uh let me get on this and i'll i'll finish this video but to give you an idea how much is out i'm almost done now and i'm almost down to the where the siphon is so now it's just to prune plants clean plants and uh the glass and take care of stuff down low plant clippings, that kind of thing. Okay guys, this is about as low as I go. You can see they're still fine. Uh, and that's, I don't know why they're getting into that. But, but the next thing that I do, what I want you to see is all these, you can see some of these leaves. And if you don't stay on top of the printings, these really get into this intake. So what I'm usually doing is I'm looking for leaves that are like yellow. See, look, there was nothing on that. So I'm just going through, and this is really a sign of uh, low nutrients, or maybe I need to put some uh, potassium in the water. Uh, that's usually what causes that kind of blight. But it can also be the, or you know, the organic film I had on the surface at one point. Um, but honestly, what I found is the more water changes you do, especially the water I have, it's rich in a lot of nutrients, and the, the plants just do really well. The plants actually uh, get happier with w more water changes than the fish do. Um, but that's, that's the kind of water I have, so there you can see that plant's not really good, and I just stamp them off. And so I'm gonna go through here and clean up and uh, finish this water change. I gotta get busy. All right, so here comes the tricky part. I'm gonna add three caps of prime, which is for 150 gallons. It's a 120 gallon tank. I go a little over, but I do for everything because I'm putting in raw tap water. Uh, the other thing I've done, as you can see, I pulled some bad sores out, try to get ones that look really blighted. And uh, then I've got a temperature gauge right back there next to those discus eggs. I need to get water on those pretty quick. I don't think they're going to dry out. They'll be fine. But the, that sensor tells me how to dial in my water because my water, especially like it's super hot outside, it changes based on heat, and I don't want to get it too hot. So, you know, it was about 85 when I started. And uh, that's what I'm shooting for. As a matter of fact, since that's in the air now, you'll notice it's, it's been dropping. All right, let me get on it. Well, I'll show you what I do. I'll put this right. Well, I don't have a way to hold it. So here's what I do. So here's my prime. Three caps of that. One, two, three. And I 
have a little clamp that I got. I have this clamp, and I just put it right here to hold this in place so that it doesn't get out of the way. Like that. And then I'm going to go hit it with the water. So. Water's going to the tank, like so. And then I'm going to hit, and I put water right there, and I see what I'm at. And see, you can see it clicking up really quick, but I want it to stop around 85. So I just watch this, and as quick as it's going up, that tells me it's too hot. Another thing I do. And you guys can't really easily do this because you don't have this kind of lid. I can take this off. I can drop this lid down like so. And then, and then it'll hold it. And I've got where if I pull and turn, like so, I'm pulling. And then it, then it holds it right where I want it. Well, I get it dialed in. So there's that. And I'm at 86.2. And uh, that's, I need to turn it down a little bit. So what I do, is go in here, and this thing's really fickle. My hot water's a little thick on Turn it back a little bit like so. So I'm, I'm right on 86.1 and actually it's going down a little bit it just dropped a tenth of a degree and it's not dropping quick so take that as a good sign that's about right where I want it so the other thing I did is I turned off this pump right there and that's just to move water in the area of the corner that's not getting good water flow and you can see everybody's fine I mean nobody's they're not thrilled. They don't like it, but we're pretty happy after it's all over, though. And then I get to do this next. I don't. I just do this with the Aquion because it's a 33. It's not so big that I need to pump it out. The next thing I have to do is I have to take this black hose out and then put my uh, outtake hose back on, and then adjust the valves accordingly. So, anyway, hey, that's a water change, and when all this is done, and i got to clean the plants out of this tank. When all this is done, I will post up a final video later this evening and put all this up for you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the ideas on the LEDs. Still trying to figure out what to do with LED lighting. Uh, let me know if you get any, uh, uh, see anything that's really interesting. I'm uh, happy to try stuff out, so uh, just trying to figure it out. But, hey, you guys be good. Happy Sunday. Later. Here's the 120. Uh, pumps just kicked back on. And they recycle. They they turn on for like two minutes and then a minute off. And then every 24 hours it turns off and tries to get air bubbles out of the system. Anyway, uh, it's a great pump. But here's what I wanted to show you. I'm working in the uh, 33. And look at this algae. Not real happy of that. But then look back here. Like, like, see the glass? See how that's a brown? See how it's brown right here? Now look at this log. This log is really, really scary. See that kind of mold? 
that is not a good mold. So uh, I'm going to clean the glass. I'm going to try to get some water flow. And I'm going to try to bump the plants. You want green algae, not brown algae or red algae. That's a bad sign. So uh, I'm going to see if I can fix that. That's just crazy what's growing on the glass. Uh, but I wanted to show you that. Uh, and that's why you probably don't wait two weeks to do a water change. Hint, hint. Uh, note to self but I'm getting on this now and this tank will boom back fine as long as you keep the water flow good you give it good light and and the plants get enough nutrients to overfeed look at the neons they're spawning I don't know if you saw that that's what they do when they spawn I get a lot of spawn behavior when I do a water change in here um, anyway and then these guys are back over there by their eggs, which is a good sign. But uh, anyway, too slow water change, I'm telling you. Unless you, you have terrible water, water changes are great for your fish. So, all right, let me get on this. I got a, I got a lot of cleaning to do on the 33. We're at it. I'm, I'm not a big fan of these magnets anymore. And the reason is some of your substrate has iron in it, at least my my black sand has iron particles in it and I scratched the 120 right there so here's what I've been doing uh, this is actually a lot cheaper it's from top thin and you can see all the crud on it but I I clean the glass by hand when I'm doing water changes and it's just a whole lot better just a FYI here's that piece of driftwood I'm doing a water change in there but I decided to pull it out because I didn't like the algae that was on it specifically that the camera's really showing you that, but it's kind of a, it almost looks like a light, lichen, like what you'd see on a tree in the woods. But I'm going to hit this with hydrogen peroxide, and I, I got a box of, or not box, but bottle of it right here. And I'm just going to pour that on there, and this will take care of it. So, see how this goes. The camera for you. This should start. Thinking it would foam. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna let that just sit. You can see it kind of smoking in the sun. It's actually steaming, fizzing, and you can see the color on it changing. So I'm gonna let that sit on it a little bit, and then I'll rinse it off, and I'll put it back in the tank, and then. Uh, We'll see what happens, but that should kill anything that's growing on it. It's also a good way to get algae off of uh, uh, leaves on your aquatic plants. But all right, I got to get back to it. I'm going to overflow the 33. Here's a piece of driftwood. I'm going to hit it with this toothbrush to just scrub anything off that may come off. And I'm hitting it with really hot water. So anyway, and then I'll put it back in the tank, guys. Here's the five gallon. Try to clean up, clean up some of the moss. Here is the 120. After a big water change, everybody's pretty happy. Not looking bad. Just give you an idea how deep this tank is. I don't know I'm doing a good job there, but let's see if I can look down. Everybody's doing pretty well. And then uh, the only thing I really want to show you, I'm going to show you the 33. Let me pull back. And this is 120 gallon tall. It's uh, four feet by two feet by two feet are the dimensions. It's a great tank. Very happy with it. All right, so the 33, I need to turn the light on. Let me turn the light on really quick. So here's the 33. Give you an idea how deep it is. And I just want to show you the driftwood after I, after I cleaned it. So, and that was the hydrogen peroxide and the toothbrush. And it looks a whole lot better. Very, very happy with it. And actually that's the stuff that was growing on the, on the outflow. 
can see, if you see under there, it actually came off, which is a bummer. I'll have to, I'll have to set that back on right there. But anyway, all right, guys, happy Sunday. Thanks for watching, and uh, you guys be good.